evening, everybody. My name is Steve, and I'm going to be showing you 10 top tips and tricks in the latest version of Final Cut Pro 10.3. So first, let's start with the end. Let's start with exporting. So I'm going to uh, jump to the exporting window for the sharing and jump to settings. Now, one of the new things that we've got here under video and uh, audio format is MXF. MXF is a metadata wrapper. It's uh, used for a lot of source material uh, coming from cameras, but you can also wrap a finished project in it when you're delivering for broadcast. And it's, it's very valuable, especially in Europe, where it's becoming the new standard. And there's lots of metadata in there so that people can enter your uh, project, your finished project, into a database and, and search for that metadata. So it's very important for us to be able to wrap this in an MXF wrapper. Now, one of the cool things about uh, choosing MXF is that I now have the ability to use ProRes as my video codec. So because Apple has published a SMPTE document that outlines exactly how an app developer would be able to decode or play back ProRes forever, it's now wrapped inside this standardized metadata wrapper, MXF. It becomes a great way to deliver for broadcast and for archiving because we'll always be able to play this back. And when we choose uh, the Apple ProRes and MXF, we also get the ability to use the multi-track of all of these audio rules that we've created uh, in our uh, project. And we want to be able to get a configuration for broadcast that's very specific. And uh, so they're all here. They're all available to me. And I can make uh, these presets which make it very fast, reduces the amount of errors, uh, especially when you're under pressure trying to hit a, a broadcast deadline. Uh, for instance, I've got a broadcast setting here uh, for English, which uh, keeps all of those subtitles. You saw Luke create that, uh, that role just for the subtitles. So for English, I want to keep those subtitles. But for a foreign broadcast, I would want a clean uh, master, and then they can subtitle that any way they like in their native language. So again, just, just very quick to uh, set up uh, very high quality archival broadcast delivery. OK, that's number one. <laughs> We're moving on to number two. So you get back from the field. You want to watch your stuff on your gorgeous P3 display in the, the MacBook Pro. And uh, you get to the end of a clip. And as you're watching it playback, it gets to the end of that clip, and it stops. So you really don't want that. You want to see all of your material, right? You want to play it all back and check it for focus and lip sync and all that. We now have the ability to check on a continuous playback here in the browser. And when you do that, now when it gets to the end of the clip, it automatically jumps to the next one. And that becomes really valuable when you've got a whole room full of people, and they're all taking notes, and they're all wanting to watch things very carefully, and you don't want to stop for anything. It's also great when you go to full screen, and you can do JK and L, and blast through all of your source material, literally just keeping your hand on the keyboard. We now have a command for adding fade handles. And I want to show you that uh, we can map that to the keyboard. So first thing I'm going to do is call up my command editor and just type in the word fade. And now you can see I've got all of these new commands for toggle audio fade in and toggle audio fade out. I'm going to quickly map that to some unused keys, like let's say option H and option J. And I'm going to save that and close it. And I can also control the length of those fades right here in my preferences. Let's make something really long so we can see it once it's applied. And now I can, let's say, select all of these audio clips right here. And zoom back a little bit. And option H and option J. And you can see that those fade handles are added very, very quickly. Now, it's also a toggle. So if I do Option H and Option J, I turn them off. And now I can use the new touch bar on this MacBook Pro. And I've got these commands here under the audio controls. And they're dedicated keys. So I can just click on those very, very quickly. I don't have to map anything. It's very direct and very quick to use the touch bar with the new MacBook Pro. All right, so that's three. Yeah, let's go to four. So I have uh, lots of metadata, of course, because it's Final Cut 10. And uh, in my timeline index, uh, I have a great way to visualize that metadata. 
And uh, when I'm looking at uh, the clips here in uh, my timeline index, I can now search for more different types of metadata. So for instance, if I have some compound clips in here, all I need to do is type in the word compound, and those clips show up in a shortened list, and I can jump there immediately uh, and, and do whatever I need to do, just get there very, very quickly. It also works for synced clips and for multicam clips. Just have to spell it right, and then it works great. So that is the timeline index searching for different kinds of metadata. Okay, number five. While I'm here, let's zoom in and take a look at uh, these connected clips. And I can now uh, press the T key, go into my trim function, and these connected clips now can do a dual rolling trim without turning it into a secondary storyline. So very, very fast for trimming one longer and trimming one shorter. Obviously, this is a much faster way to do it. Thanks. Um, I can also, uh, while I'm here, uh, navigate if I'm working with lots of layers, lots of um, audio rolls with the command and the arrows keys. So I can just step up or down with command up and command down. You can see, again, how quick that is to jump to a very specific clip. So keep your hands on the keyboard. And once these are selected, I can now trim them uh, at the same time using, again, some of the, uh, the trim start, trim uh, end, and uh, trim to playhead. So I can just do the, the option uh, back bracket uh, like that. Or again, I can use the touch bar on the new MacBook Pro and uh, just uh, press a single button. And uh, when they're all selected, trim them all at the same time. What's really cool about using the uh, touch bar is while it's playing, I can choose to trim to the playhead without even stopping. So imagine how fast you can trim uh, talking heads or dialogue. Uh, you're, you're shortening uh, the head or the tail of a clip without even stopping playback. All right, we have another effect I want to talk about, a brand new time code effect. So uh, let's open up the effects browser and type in time and there you go, a time code effect. Now, this is a different time code effect from what you've seen before because it is going to show me not the timeline time code, but the source time code. So here it is, the clip source time code. So this is great for making burn-ins, and you can discuss with your clients exactly what frame they love and which frames they hate, and you get it exactly right. Uh, you also have the ability here to choose what frame rate you'd like to, uh, to work with if the frame rate of your clip is different from what's in the timeline. And, and some other uh, adjustments here. So if I've got uh, lower third super or if I have some kind of uh, subtitles, I can very quickly just uh, move that off to the side so that it's not obstructing anything important. So that is the source time code effect. All right, let's move on to number nine. So let's go to uh, import. Now, I know uh, most of you know what XML is, uh, and uh, some of you are familiar with working with IXML. And IXML, if you're not familiar, is the kind of metadata that's added to uh, sound clips in the field by the sound recordist. And it can be lots of things. It's very flexible. So it could be the name of the microphone, so if it's a, a lavalier uh, or if it's a boom. Uh, it could be the name of the character that is wearing that microphone. So if you're uh, recording, uh, say, reality TV and you have 10 lavaliers, each one of those lavs could have uh, the character's name. So it's very easy to uh, determine who's speaking at the time and which microphone to, to use. In uh, Final Cut Pro uh, 10.3, we now have the ability to use that IXML metadata to automatically assign roles. So the amount of time you're going to spend organizing, especially with complex sound, pretty much goes down to zero uh, because I can now just import that. And here it is in the inspector. You can see it took all the names here and automatically created those roles in one step. So <laughs> if, if you just want to use the mix, you know, of course, that's generally what uh, most people are going to go for. You can just turn all these others off. But one of the great things about the way that Final Cut 10 uses audio is that those channels come along for the ride. So if you get into the mix in the Pro Tools and they say, oh, there's a bang on uh, one of these lobs, we need to go to an ISO microphone, 
All that stuff is right there, and it goes along with the XML that's going to Pro Tools. Uh, or if you're doing that yourself, here you can just turn that on and off. You don't have to be match framing back to some sound roll and try and uh, figure out what uh, microphone you need to use uh, when somebody hits their microphone. So very quick way to get a higher quality sound mix using IXML metadata from the field. All right, so that was number nine. Uh, number 10. Now I have the ability to record a voiceover and automatically assign a custom role. So it's going to default to a voiceover role. Of course, I can use all the other roles that happen to be available to me here. But I like the fact that it just has its own voiceover role automatically. I don't need to do anything. And so if I wanted to go ahead and start uh, recording voiceover, let's do that. So welcome to the Los Angeles Creative Pro user group. And if I keep talking long enough, you will see that there are no clip collisions when I'm recording voiceover. <laughs> right? So when I get all the power of all the, all the roles that, that you've seen uh, uh, Luke um, working with, uh, the ability to move it around, to uh, um, minimize all the other uh, roles, um, and uh, manipulate it uh, in ways that uh, you just can't do uh, on any other editing system. So that is 10, uh, but I actually have one more. So I have 11, uh, so this is the bonus one. And that is the larger size for the inspector. Now Luke showed that to you as part of the organization workspace, but I just want to remind folks that you can get that larger size inspector by just double clicking at any time. And now I can see this huge amount of uh, metadata, and especially if I've got something that's really complex, I'm not going to be scrolling up and down. I'm going to get the best use out of this uh, MacBook Pro screen. And uh, when I'm working on stuff with lots of uh, parameters, uh, I can also see all of those as well without scrolling up and down. So very quickly jumping between those parameters, using the full real estate available to me out in the field, being able to do a higher quality edit, a higher quality sound mix with Final Cut 10.3, and the touch bar on the new MacBook Pro. So.